What's up, everybody? This is Justin Davis, um, and I'm here to welcome you to the first episode of The A Show, the one show where we talk about wrestling hot takes, and uh, it's unapologetic, it's no holds barred. Well, that's, that's one of the segments, it's, but it is no hold, holds barred, and it's, it's bringing you the very best and the very most recent of wrestling news and reviews, and I really just want to do this show because I... I just really like talking about wrestling and, and fantasy booking, and I, I just don't feel like there's anybody in the world that I would rather do that with than someone whose opinions are diametrically always opposed to mine. <laughs> and that, I don't think they're always 100% opposed, but there's, yeah, a contrarian opinion, sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you just like to do that to get on my nerves. But, um, <laughs> my, uh, maybe, I don't know, sometimes. My man, Jamil, of course, you hear him right there. Jamil Rayburn's yes. here, Meals TV, uh, B Show candidate of the year. Uh, wow! And and I think sure. I think we've done this before. Like we we've, done, we've always kind of circled the the wrestling path, uh, so to speak. But um, I, th- I think now doing something very proper is fun because I, I think in our individual shows we don't really get a chance to talk about it at great at great length like we will here. Yeah, wrestling is kind of taboo if you're trying to like get over something else. So let's say, like, mostly, all right, so the two best podcasts that I have with Carlos, it's mostly about music. Um, yours is also very much about music and other things as well, but in terms of trying to fit professional wrestling into that kind of just turns off the general public for some reason. I don't know. But I feel like this is a good this is a good place. This is a good venue that we can just sort of get in, get our thoughts out, get our diametrically opposed thoughts out, and really hash it out over what's going on during the week, what's going on in wrestling, what's, like, everything. Yeah, and um, just to say that, you know, like, we're, we're going we're gonna to try and bring the show to you guys as much as possible, as, as quickly as possible. Of course, there is a time difference issue here. Not this issue, but it's crazy time issue, uh, time difference issue. But, I mean, if you guys like it, let us know. Um, subscribe to it on iTunes, or subscribe to my channel, rather, on, I- on iTunes and, and SoundCloud. Um, this will be going right next to Voice of the Voiceless and, and you know, any other audio recordings I might have. Um, but let's jump right into it. Uh, this is the segment called No Holds Barred, as you heard earlier. This is where we talk about the news of the week, and we kind of run everything down. Um, are you ready, Milt? I'm ready. I'm ready. First bit I'm, of... I'm, go ahead. I haven't been cleared on pretty much all the topics, but I'm ready. You know what? I'm ready to talk about it. it, it it's, it's fine. It's whatever. I'll bring you up the speed. I've, I've, I have thoughts. I'll bring you up to speed. Uh, the, the first bit of news I'm pretty sure you have heard is that uh, Nia Jax, uh, Raw superstar Nia Jax, has left the show um, or left the WWE for an indefinite amount of time but on a leave of absence. Um, she's been off of TV for almost a month now. I, I want to say she was off uh, maybe two weeks before TLC. And um, yeah. there, she, there have been conflicting reports uh, that she was burnt out. Um, I think Alexa Bliss said that on – or her friend Alexa Bliss said that on um, – a radio interview a couple of days ago that she was burnt out and she just needed some time away. But more interesting is that there's another story coming out that she actually left because of her booking and, and she spoke with her cousin. As you all know, she's the cousin of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Um, and The Rock said basically, hold, you know, hold Vince over a barrel and he'll do what you want and just, just leave. Um, what do you think about that? Um, in terms of that, I, I mean, I guess... I can sympathize in terms of just being like, oh man, not having this sort of creative or not, or feeling that you're not being used in an appropriate setting at least. But I, 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 I always have this thought that even, even in the worst of booking, it eventually comes around to yeah. you. Yeah, it um, does. I think with Nia Jax, it, it was looking pretty shaky since her main roster debut. I believe it was earlier this season. Was it earlier this year? Yeah, it was. Uh, she, it was. She's been there about a no, no, year. Last year. Yeah, she's been there year. about a year. Yeah, it's, she's, she's been, been there, there since year. last year. So she came on last year, and it's been. You know, she's received multiple opportunities for the women's championship, and it's like something that we've always talked about. Um, receiving multiple opportunities for the women's championship, but I feel like if they really wanted her to be women's champion, she probably would have done it already. Yeah. Um, she she's lost. I don't know how many times to Sasha Banks. Um, it just feels like with her in terms of just how the direction that they have for her, it doesn't feel consistent at all. 
you want her to be this giant monster, but at the same time, you she being she's she's not as not too different. She she says I'm not like any other girls, but she's not too different than any other girls. Granted, she weighs over a hundred pounds more than most other girls. Yeah. But at the same time, she's getting beaten, not maybe not as easily, but just handedly at least. Um, something that was shocking for me was like last year's Survivor Series, and I know we're gonna get into Survivor Series talk this year. Yeah. She was pinned and eliminated from the match, and I was like, "What the hell is going on here?" Yeah, and and that was a cool spot though last year with the way they did it. They made her look strong in in defeat. But um, and and I think me and you both agree with this, and I and I just add like, I th- I don't think her in ring does her any favors as well. Yeah, she injured Bailey earlier this year, uh, and took Bailey out of a very important program, which I think that she probably would have won the belt. It's um, really an important program because even Bailey it was looking kind of shaky in the light these days. Yeah, like, but, but you have to remember that this was this was a program where um. This is this was like right before like it was this is during the Alexa Bliss feud like right in the middle of it and I and I think that there, I think there might have been a plan to actually you know make Bailey overcome that in in that sense and, and I think you know her and Nia kind of share the same um, the same issue right now with their booking but I think Nia's in ring doesn't help like I I don't think she's very spectacular in the ring she's shown improvement but I think those the opportunities are given to people that are actually proven in the ring and and I think the problem with raw is that there are a lot of unproven people besides Sasha and Emma and Bailey that they they just can't like they can't go like that so i I get it, but I also think that there's there's also like just wait and see everyone gets their time but everyone gets their time, but I also feel like it's another issue, and I can say that with like I guess the direction of the w w e well at least the women's division because while we've had the women's revolution, while we've had, you know, all those for a sudden, they really focus on those main four girls, the four horsewomen. Yeah. Like, those are the pivotal focus. I mean, we have Alexa Bliss now, which is kind of shaking things up. I feel like she's um, a character that adds a, a pretty good foil to any face that you put her against. But they're really focusing on a small group of women and not really the full spectrum of the division. Yeah. So we'll have the same feuds over and over, but I feel like it's like, for me, it's like they're really focusing on these four girls and they they don't really see it for anybody else. And I think maybe Nia Jack Jack saw that, saw the writing on the wall when she was booked to lose against Sasha Banks again. And you know Sasha Banks is a big player on Raw. Uh, I guess Bailey is supposed to be as well, but she's been losing a lot of awfully. Charlotte, Becky Lynch, those type of girls are in main, you know, big positions where they're going to be the cornerstone of the company moving forward. And I just feel like maybe Nia Jax are writing on a wall. It's just like, wow, you you guys are really just, this is really just going to be the same thing over and over and over again. Um, How, I mean, how Sasha Banks has arguably been in the title hunt. I mean, off and on, she's been in the title hunt for the last two years. Um, Maybe, maybe a year and a half, maybe a year and a half or so. Yeah. Um, But it's, it's time for other people to sort of have these fresh programs. You have Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. You have the smallest girl on the roster versus the biggest girl on the roster. I don't see how, I mean, they're both heels, but I feel like you could make something with that work or at least, you know, freshen up the division a bit. Maybe she just saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, I, I don't think she's going to leave. I, I think she'll be back. The, I don't think so either. Um, I don't think she's still, I still don't think she's getting the title. But um, I, I think the money, the money match here. To be honest, and I think if she just is patient, it'll happen. I think the money match here is, is her versus Asuka eventually. And um, I, I'll, I'll put this out in the air. I think she's going to be the one to beat Asuka, to be honest. I think it would be, I think it would be a good, de- I mean, a good decision, but I think that's likely. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Sasha think deserves it. I don't think Sasha deserves it. I don't think Bailey deserves that. I don't think Alexa deserves that. I, there aren't a lot of women on that roster for Oscar to beat. I think it's even less than NXT hat. They can't feed her. It can't feed her the jobbers every week. And I, I think you stretch this out to WrestleMania, like it's, it's going to be tough for Oscar. But that's like a whole. That's, it, that's a different story. But yeah, I think it depends more. And we'll probably get into Oscar a little bit later. I think it depends more on just like how Oscar pans out on the main roster to see who turns. Of- defeating her because i think arguably she could be go undefeated as long as she got on nxt or it could be really short and she could be defeated by the royal rumble who knows i think it's really all about the uh the 
the reception from fans. Because yeah. what we've learned over the past call-ups for the last couple of years is that NXT is far different than the main roster. Far in different. In terms of how they book people, in terms of how their people are viewed. Neville was one of the main people on, you know, who also, you know, most recently walked out. Um, what, Neville was one of the main cornerstones on NXT, and when he got to the main roster, I mean, he he hasn't had one high-profile feud, and I think eventually that got to him as well. He possibly saw the writing on the wall, like, hey, this is not going to become a better situation for me anytime soon. I could wait around and be unhappy, or I could go out and do something about it. And maybe it's, it's the same sort of mentality, walking out. Yeah, I and I completely agree. I think that um, I I just I don't know. I, I, we have very strong feelings about Naya. I think that she's an, she's necessary. She is a she is a um she's a look that it's not normal in the in the division mm-hmm. and a look that I think that they're actually gravitating to more. If you look at some of the women in the May Young Classic, they're gravitating to that look more and they're cool with that look. And I think right. she, she she if anything she should be um. Not even not not commended, but she she should be looked at as kind of like a a, a barrier breaker in the, in that sense, you know. Um, but yeah, I I, I think Nia will be back soon. I don't think it's much to worry about. She's already advertised for the European shows next month, so she'll be fine. Um, I hope it's not as I, I in just sort of a closing thoughts. I really hope it's not an image thing. Yeah. Because I know for the WWE and the people who are in charge and the people who have been in charge for quite a long time. They tend to go for a certain image, and it's usually like an Alexa Bliss, where it's like this blonde, beautiful, you know, woman, and they sort of push that to the front because that's kind of what America is or what it is, and they don't really see it for anybody else. I remember um, initially, I remember it talks about um, when they were hiring Amazing Calm, Karma, yeah, and Jr. was she she talks very openly about how Jr. said that she's not going to make it because of just how she looks. And it's just, I, I just really hope it's not necessarily about that, because it, it, it can become an issue. Yeah, it but can. But she, she is on Total Divas. She's on Total Divas, which is coming back next week. Yeah, so, so. I mean, she ain't, she ain't leaving. She ain't, she ain't yeah. leaving. She ain't leaving. Um, our next point, this is, this is kind of like a, a straight news story that just came out today. WWE stocks have gone up, man. We're going up. We're getting money. We're going up. I'm not invested in the. Every time I see that, I am becoming more clear that I have not invested in my future, and I should. You really <laughs> or at should. Least something, or at least something I should, but uh, and then I'm also like, is WWE the right stock to invest in? Hell yeah, hmm. they're they're experiencing they're experiencing not a boom, but they're experiencing the the youth. I, I think their their youth uh, movement is working. It's it's largely mm-hmm. working. I think um, a lot of people that weren't really, they were really into the Attitude Era, they're familiar with the new guys now. They're familiar with Seth Rollins and the Dean Ambroses and the Roman Reigns and the Finn Balor's. Like, a lot of people know who these guys are. And and I thought, I, I was worried because I didn't think that, I didn't I was just really concerned because I didn't think people would, would gravitate to these guys. And, I, and not because of um, their their in-ring, but the, their look. And, and, I, and I think, you know, with everything they're doing as far as merch and overseas stuff and they're, you know, they're really succeeding in a lot of ways, and and I think a lot of people do the doom and gloom thing with WWE. Like, they don't have an Austin, they don't have a Rock, but they're still making more money. You know, so it's not, not more. Maybe, maybe for, I'm not saying more money than you know in their heyday or seen as heyday even, but they're still making money hand over fist, and I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, like two three years ago, we were um, we were debating over how successful would be the WWE network. And I feel like it's, it's, it's showing now in terms of long term, it has become a successful model for them. Yeah. Uh, I'm still not sure how it is for the actual talent themselves. It's in not. In terms of how they're re- receiving money or royalties or anything. Yeah. But it's doing well for the company, which I guess brings more attention to the company, which will get more people to the shows, which will get more people to buy merch, which I assume is what they're going upon in terms of letting people know that the network is actually working. But, you know, it's a, it's a, they've been moving in a smart direction, you know, over yeah. the past couple of years. So Absolutely. It, you know, it shows. They're making money. I mean, PG era is a success. I'll say that. Can we say that? PG era is a success. PG era? Yeah. We're in the reality era, my friend. Well, we're, we're still, we're still era. PG. We're, we're st- in the new era. I mean, we're still PG, but we've been PG for a while. This is the new era, baby. This is, this is reality. This is. Actually, I don't think I don't know if it's reality or the new era. I remember they were trying to get over a new era a lot earlier. Yeah, it, this year. 
for the last year. With Cena, when Cena came back, line. when Cena came back, he was like, "I'm not old." <laughs> new era, right, right. One of those. This is definitely the new era. Um, yeah. Uh, another ne- the next news point I want to talk about is Jeff Jarrett, who uh, is checked into rehab. I want to just send my. Uh, I don't know a lot about this. Uh, yeah, yeah, apparently he had a show over the weekend and he showed up drunk and in no condition to perform. They let him go, and um, you know, then just days before that, he was let go completely. Uh, his his because because you, you know like you know go, his Global Force Wrestling organization took over uh, Impact. Then, like, a month later, it was gone. Like, they, they took it away, and Anthem bought them. It's a company in Canada named Anthem bought them. And now Anthem is saying they've cut completely, they've completely cut all ties with Jeff Jarrett. Um, it's looking like he has some, some substance abuse issues going on right now, and he's actually checked into a WWE paid for. Um, you know, WWE looks out for their, their old talent, and they, they'll put them in rehab, and it looks like Jeff Jarrett has took them up, took them up on that offer. So... Just want to send my prayers out to that guy. Hopefully, he get he gets the help that he needs. Yeah, man. Much much props to Jeff Jarrett for for you know taking that step and going to seek help. Yeah. Um, I think you know it's a good thing that WWE does in terms of just offering this rehab. And you wouldn't think you know I don't know. I guess I'm not evil. I guess they're not completely evil. But I was like, hey, would they ever give that option to Jeff Jarrett? Who yeah. They've, you know, had not have not. Their relationship over the past almost twenty years now has been cold. relatively non-existent. Yeah, it's, it's been cold. Yeah, <laughs> it's been cold. It's been, it's been. They're, it's questionable if he's going into a Hall of Fame. It was questionable if he ever show up on WWE TV again. Never say never. Uh, never say never. <laughs> I, I'm one hundred percent never say never, but I, it, I think it's still questionable. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's a. I think it's a good. It's. it's it's good for him moving forward and making that step and saying, "Hey, I want to help. I, I don't want to go through this. I, want, I need the help that I need in my life." Yeah. So, uh, shout, uh, not shouts out, but but you know, prayers up for Jeff Jarrett right now. Hopefully, prayers up for Jeff Jarrett. He gets real. out of that. Uh, and and last point on this week is the meningitis pool. Man, there, no. there are a number of WWE superstars out with meningitis, including JoJo, uh, Bo Dallas, who I hear has it the worst, um, Bray Wyatt, and now Roman Reigns, which is surprising. But I'm here. Meningitis sounds just as bad as it is. Staph infection. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I'm looking up. Like, all right. So I had to. I feel like the one good thing about being a wrestling fan, or at least any sort of sports fan, is if you follow sports really, really closely, you kind of learn about injuries and you learn about you know medical conditions or things like that i remember a couple of weeks ago i had an issue with my neck yeah and so i went to um i went to a doctor and they were telling me all about you know the c4s and three and i'm just like i know all this <laughs> I, I watch, i've seen i watched steve austin steve austin go under the knife i've watched lita edge i've seen all of this like i know you're giving me the same stick that they give everybody else <laughs> but i mean it, it, at, at least <laughs> and i don't want to say it that extreme because i did not break my neck it was it was I sprained my neck or something along those lines. But it was a, you know, it, you learn about these type of things. And meningitis is no joke. I'm reading it and it says an inflammation swelling of the With their brain. membranes yeah. covering the brain and the spinal cord, which is scary as shit. Yeah, bro. Um, it's scary. So a lot of, uh, it, it, it's a viral disease. It, it's, they don't want it affecting more of the roster, so they've, in turn affected shows this yeah. week or the, the past week. Do you think, um, I mean, and my question with this is, do you think that this will affect Survivor Series in any way? Because Bray is out, and, I, and, I, and I'm hearing that Bray, will, Bray and Bo will be out longer than, than anybody. I'm, I'm hearing Bray will be out probably for a month. If it, if Roman Reigns can recover, I don't think it affects it too much. I feel like Roman Reigns is probably the they, most. They, they might have caught him early. They might have caught Roman early because if right. you if you remember, they announced that on Friday that he had it, and I was Absolutely. like, maybe he, and he performed on that Monday or that Sunday the actually. Case that also had it, Tom Phillips. Yeah, I Tom, believe. no, Tom Phillips is getting Tom, married. He's getting married. Oh, he's getting married. Yeah, he's been off SmackDown for weeks, man. He's been off SmackDown for two weeks. It'll be the second week. He probably got married and has has a honeymoon. Had his honeymoon. I think all he right, might be back next right, week. Don't catch meningitis my guy yeah um because this this largely affected this largely affected raw superstars okay yeah all right i mean you know tom phillips could have been hanging out i don't know i'm catering (laughs) (laughs) but it's a 
it's, it's, it's scary, and I don't think it affects it too much. It kind of makes, you know, Bo Dallas had something with the Mistourage, and it just looks kind of uneven now, um, just because there's only Curtis Axel, so it kind of looks like, you know, he previously had Maurice. Maurice is pregnant, so she's off of television indefinitely, probably for the rest forever. Um, maybe. <laughs> but, and now, you know, Bo Dallas is out, so it kind of looks weird for the Mistourage, even though I know I'm really the only person on this podcast who really cares about the Mistourage thing deeply. Um, and, yeah. And Bo, Bray Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, you are. You really are. <laughs> Bray, Bray Wyatt, um, I feel like you can really move him. He's kind of flexible in terms of you can move him in and out and kind of like, you know, kind of like blame it all to Hocus Pocus or something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, and, and we'll get to... We'll get to him him in a second, right? Because we're going to go right into the raw review from this. But um, well, let's just go into the raw review because we got to talk about Bray anyway. Did you watch Raw on Monday? Yeah. Did you did you watch? I did watch Raw on Monday. I I the way I watch Raw at least. So just to preface this for everybody who um, everybody who's going to be listening to this podcast moving forward, <laughs> um, I do watch Raw, but. I've learned, I've watched Raw pretty much for the past, like, 20 years. There's been 20 years of my life, which I dedicate Mondays to. Mm-hmm. Now, three hours is just way too long. <laughs> that I feel that I can just, just give up any terms of productivity. Like, three hours is just, like, I could be doing something else. So, I tend to watch Raw, but I'm also doing something else. So, I'm kind of paying attention to the big parts. But if it's like, oh, you know, Jason Jordan versus Elias, like, I'm going to watch it on mute and go back to, like, I don't know, writing an article or shopping online or something along those lines. Like, I feel like it's it's just such a large part of my evening. And you get it good because you get it, like, 5 p.m. if you care to watch it at 5 p.m. Me at 8 o'clock, and I know you, I mean, you're from the East Coast, too, so you probably yeah. remember this. Like... It's just like, oh, well, there goes my night. Like, you know, here it is. But, you know, I, I, I did watch Raw, just to make a long story short. But just moving forward, just so everybody knows. In case I miss something, which I might, um, it's because of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are the big points from Raw, my friend? Um, Big points from Raw, uh, I, I guess we just go ahead and go for the obvious. Um, The, the SmackDown invasion of Raw happened. Uh, and yeah. we'll, and I want to get to that in a set. That kind of that's going to be an overarching theme for our review, our TV reviews this week. So I I'll get to the biggest point because I'll just say right now I didn't like the show. I thought the show was bad. I thought it was a bad show. Um, yeah, I mean it's. I think it started off well and then it kind of got lost in the middle for a very long time. Like got to be for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And then it made sense. The the last segment. Kind of made not well. That didn't even make sense. All right, it was yeah. Kind of, it, it was kind of a, by the by the second hour. Different. Yeah, by the second hour, I already knew this. This wasn't going to be something I was going to continue continue to watch. And I and I kind of bounced around. I kind of like bounced around with with Raw. Uh, you know, on on Monday, but um, mm-hmm. I, I I think big the the big things are here, here. There was a great match with with uh, with AJ Styles and um, half of the Shield. Yes. Half shield. Two thirds of the shield. Half two shield. Thirds. Um, Half shield. Yeah, and uh, uh, I. Can, it was a good six man. Yeah, I it was like a good six. A, man. I like a good six man match. Like a, a six man, very underrated match. Ten man, also very underrated. But my thing is, ten man tag. But my thing is, it's like you had AJ. We'll get to it in a second. Uh, Kane Kane beat Finn Balor, uh, and I think that's the sure. big. That's the big. That's the biggest point, or or what. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think. What? What? Why? You know, here's my, here's my here's my theory about this. Um, because I did have to think about it. Like, why in the why in God's name did this ever happen? So I think it's a turn of priorities now shifting with the um, injury of Bray Wyatt. So we had this great match on Sunday between AJ and Finn Balor. Uh, and now we're moving forward with sort of a, a Kane and Kane and Braun Strowman angle, but we don't have quite anything for Finn Balor considering how short notice this was. So they're looking for someone on the roster who can make Kane look good, which is wild. Twenty years later, I mean, he's not even 
he's not even close to you know his prime form or anything. But he still, I think he still moves around pretty well for as long as he's been in the ring. Kane, Glenn Jacobs still moves around pretty well. He's still pretty mobile. He's not the best. I don't think he's coming off the top of rope anymore. No. But yeah, he's he's still pretty moving and mobile. But I think they're moving forward with the Braun Strowman thing. I think Finn Balor's just a casualty of not having anything to do, but still a very strong name to put Kane over. I, and you know, usually I'm the guy that's telling people to chill out and, and con- not be concerned. I'll tell you why this concerned me. Sure. Um, He's coming off of a win against AJ Styles, so I wouldn't say that's nothing. That's um, true, but it, 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 I feel like it was a match that um, there was no sort of stakes involved that would be lasting. But you know what? But, long-term stakes. But you know what did happen in that match is... What? Uh, the too sweet thing. I think that might have been a problem for them. Mm. I think the, the, mm. too, I, I the too sweet thing wasn't planned in, from what AJ Styles said. And my thing is, AJ's not going to get punished for that because he's not on that show. You know what I'm saying? Plus he just flew 18 hours to Chile. Exactly. Chile to do that show. Yeah, he's not going to get punished for that. And Finn is someone who's, who's largely stayed away from these types of, of strange punishments. I, I, if you remember, like Punk, you know, Punk would get punished this way a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very obvious on TV. Like it's, it's, the thing about it is him losing to Kane, whatever, you have to keep Kane strong. But the timing, to me, is the problem with that match. I, f- I feel like if we see another... Well, all right. So I'm watching it now, and I'm watching... You might have a point considering these three very choke slams. Yeah. Like, it was just a mauling of Finn Balor. Yeah. Because uh, someone, like to... someone said he took three choke slams. He make, that makes him look strong. I'm like, no... If here's the thing that would have made him look strong, if he kicked out of one of them, you know what I'm saying? At like least one of them, right, yeah, exactly, one hundred percent. That makes him look um, strong. I, I think I want to see where this sort of goes. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a punishment, but I definitely want to see where it goes. Um, it could, who knows? It, it could end up in a in a brief Finn Balor versus Kane feud, and maybe that's a buffer feud until he, Braun Strowman comes back from death. Or something along those lines, and maybe that's the angle. Maybe that's where they're going. Who knows? But I'd, I'd like to see this play out more. Uh, but it is kind of alarming in terms of just you have this new talent, and then you have Kane, you know, who hasn't been any sort of relevance in a long time, just, you know, quite handedly, you know, dismantling one of your top prime players. It's, it's, it's scary. I don't know. Yeah, and I, you know, I. I I think like I don't know it's just, it it bothered me and I'm just like this is 50 year old Kane I'm like what was what, what, was Kurt Hawkins busy like the Finn, Finn didn't need this to, is true. Finn didn't need to be on the but show could, Finn didn't need to be on the but show could, but could Kurt Hawkins make you look strong like <laughs> like he has a losing streak of you know whatever and it could it doesn't even have to be Kurt Hawkins he could have beat Kurt Hawkins within I an think, inch of his life he could have beat Kurt Hawkins within an inch of his life like he used to do to Zack Ryder everybody beats Kurt Hawkins. Like it's not, it's not the same. It's like even if you had someone even a bit stronger, I don't think you have the value or stock that Finn Bauer has, especially coming off that loop. I see why they did it. I don't agree with the, why they did it. I don't really like that they did it, but I see why they did it. I just see. I, there's no, there's no other person on the roster currently free with no program that can just take a loss to Kane. You know? I mean, I guess Dean Ambrose could have, but you know, whatever. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah I don't, but yeah, I I, I think that I think that um, I don't know that that just bothered me. I, I as far as other things that happened during the show, Oscar and Emma went against each other again. Uh, it was a shorter match on Sunday. There's a big argument about the way Oscar's been booked in the last seventy two hours that she had been on TV. Uh, what did you feel? What did you feel about it? I feel like this is another case of the main roster is way different than NXT. Yeah. Uh, in terms of my, just the agents. And my the thing booking. is, my thing is, you want her on TV every week. Just like, it's, it's my thing with, with with Nakamura, where people are like, and I'm not saying Nakamura is being booked spectacularly, but there's a, right. there's always, there, there's always a, you know, you guys want them to be on TV. You have to, you have to live with the fact that they're going to be on TV every week. They're not going to be special attractions every week. Because, I mean, this is essentially what you guys wanted for them. You know, you, it's, right. like, it's like you want them to move up and go to college. And it's like, but you don't really want the, you don't want the barbs that, that come with that, you know? And 100%. um, I think that like more more than anything, more than anything, I I don't mind. I, I think WWE's thinking was that she had a really good match against Emma, so they can do it again. 
and and the ma- and the two matches weren't bad. They're, they're not, they weren't bad they're matches. They're probably gonna do it again. Let's be honest. Yeah, they're probably gonna do it again. They're, they're, they're gonna do it again and again and again because there's no there are no programs for her, and they, and WWE doesn't book like they don't have jobber squashes anymore on Raw. So um, right. you know, it's it wasn't a bad match, but I don't think I think it's way too early, and I think I think I even still think that it's way too early to cause Nakamura a failure. I think I I, I think it's it's taken a while for him to get settled. But they, they had a gender thing that they wanted to do, you know, and, and I don't know. It, it's just it's, Prior, priorities on the main roster are completely different than the priorities on NXT. Absolutely. And on NXT, Asuka was a priority and Nakamura was a priority. On the main roster, there's multiple priorities. There's a John Cena priority. There's a Brock Lesnar priority. There's an AJ Styles priority. There's a Roman Reigns priority. Yeah. There's a Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Charlotte. Um, I think. It's good that Asuka was on TV. I'm starting. I'm gonna have to sort of shift because I was. I too was wondering. It's like, wait, how come Asuka isn't just like dismantling, just um, you know, Emma? She can't. Just based, <laughs> yeah, just based on. But she, it's just. I feel like this is how we're gonna move forward, and it may be a different Asuka we're looking at on the main roster than we are looking at from NXT. And I think it the point. Up, I think the point of her story is that she's undefeated. Not that she's yeah. dismantling people. I I I much rather her be undefeated than have her squashed. The the, the women's division is only but so big. Like right. feeding... I, I don't know if she's gonna end up becoming because it's kind of weird in the sense she was booked because I don't know if she was booked as an underdog, but at least her offense was kind of underdoggy. Like she was fighting from underneath. That's how they book baby something... faces. That's how they book baby right. faces on main roster. Right. Right. So it, it was kind of weird, at least seeing that from Oscar. The Oscar I fell in love that kicks ass and takes name. Yeah. Um, I think the when the moment I fell in love with her was her match with Cam, Cameron, where Cameron tried to slap her and she just slapped on in an armbar in a matter of three seconds and I was and like, oh, this is it. But they like, had the depth. Amazing. NXT had the depth to do shit like that. You this know, one hundred percent. And they, yeah. it's, it's just a different part. Yeah, it's just different priorities. So I feel like we're gonna be seeing this a lot from Oscar. I don't know. I feel like we're going to, I think if everyone's waiting for them to do these high profile matches in certain situations, that you're going to be disappointed because I think we're going to get an Oscar versus Bailey on Raw. We're going to get an Oscar versus Sasha on Raw. Yeah. Um, as much as we'd like to, this first time ever thing, that's not what, how WWE does. They got to have ratings. It's, it's, it's different than NXT where you can sort of tape it and like linger for months without them actually having to face each other until it's time. Like, there's a television show that needs ratings every week. So, you're going to get these type of situations with Asuka. And, you know, it's it's, uh, it's interesting to see what they kind of do. Yeah. Um, skipping around the show, uh, I'm sure we don't want to talk about uh, Jason Jordan versus Elias. Uh, no, but that fucking... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't be fussing on this show. Um, that guitar shot looked like that, it hurt. That guitar shot was badass. Like, that hurt. He, he, he really swung that in, like, his, yeah. and immediately he swelled up, like, it was crazy. Um, yeah, we, can, we can skip we can around that it. shit. Uh, Alexa Bliss segment, we can skip that, too. I'm pretty sure, I think we're getting, we're gonna probably get... Alexa Bliss, like, I'll say one thing about this, in terms of that. I like Mickey James and Alexa Bliss's match on TLC. Really good match. Um, I think they can get a little bit more out of this program, believe it or not. I, I do think, too. I think you hold off Alexa and Asuka for as long as you can because we already know we already know what's popping. We already know what's about to happen. And I think you hold that off until about Royal Rumble time or maybe uh, whatever the, the February pay-per-view is. I don't think they got Elimination right. Chamber this year. But um, no. I, I think you hold that off for as long as possible and you have uh, right. you either have Asuka's first match be with her bringing in the title or her winning the title at, at WrestleMania. Right. And I think and that's the goes- long-term book. You build another strong face too. So yeah. you build another strong face in Mickey James, who's need, who has needed to be sort of reestablished since she came back last year. Absolutely. Remember when she came back last year, and it was kind of like, you know, it wasn't crickets, but it wasn't the reaction. Well, well she came back twice, I think, and I, th- I right. think that that kind of, well, like the NXT one was by far the, the biggest comeback that she had uh, right. from last year, and then she came back on SmackDown, and it was, and I think because the thing on SmackDown was that Becky versus Alexa was such a heatless feud. And I think that was yeah. sort of like at the at the tail end of like of um, Becky really being that face that I I saw her as. I love Becky though. Right, I agree. I um, agree. But um, but I guess let's get to this Paul Heyman segment about Jinder Mahal, uh, which I really want to talk about. Um, I, f- I feel like in eventually long term, long format, we're definitely gonna have a have have to have a conversation about Jinder Mahal. Yeah. And just like 
how important really is Jinder Mahal? And I'm not saying he isn't, but just a conversation somewhere down the line. Oh, I'm, I we, but, can, we can do a nice episode. I would love to have that conversation because I, I think the gender thing on many on many levels has been a positive for them in India. But it has been since July, it has been or June, it has been a detriment to the SmackDown brand as a whole. It has it right. has put that brand in a stopgap, and we'll get to that when, on the SmackDown review in a second. But um, yeah. Paul Heyman eviscerates Jinder Mahal here. He one hundred percent. I felt as though in this match, and I and I I don't think it was fair <laughs> to do that first. I think he should have did that last. Um, Listen, I I think Paul Heyman wants the best out of Jinder Mahal. Yeah. So he's not making it easy on him yeah. for any second. Yeah. Like even the 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 promo by gender a little bit better this week, but still not you know still nothing to sort of shake right home about. about. Yeah. But, right, right, right. <laughs> but it's like I think he's trying to really get the best out of Jinder Mahal. I think he really wants to dig in him and possibly <laughs> stir something within him. Well, here's my uh, thing, and and I'm probably gonna say this when we have this conversation. When is it? When is it gonna? When is it gonna end? It, it, like. You put him in the ring with Orton. You put him in the ring with AJ. You put him in the ring with Cena. You put him in the ring with Nakamura twice. Um, he he hasn't gotten better. That's my thing. Like let's, he, let's he has. Let's have a longer conversation. All right, about this for, all right. Like, but um, basically, 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 Paul Heyman says that he he you know he prays Goldberg, Samoa Joe, and and Braun Strowman, and he calls gender the make believe Maharaja uh, with the knockoffs that you know the Samir this uh, the, the Singh brothers doing his uh, doing his stick. And he, he runs down a list of, of, like, a lot of different WWE champions like Hogan and San Martino and calls Mahal the consolation prize for SmackDown when, he got, when, when they got the shaft and the shakeup. Um, I, listen, well, he, at the end, he accepts the challenge that Jinder Mahal made last week. Um, sure. But I, to me, when I, when I watched this, I was like, I don't even want to, this, this is a pre-show match <laughs> to me. This is this is a good little house show, you know, exhibition. Yeah. I don't know Survivor Series, but we we haven't seen. For all you know, you know, they jump Brock Lesnar next week. Who knows? I I don't you know, know. It, but I, and I guess we'll just skip right to the end or, here, uh, yeah. where Kurt Angle, who still hasn't announced the, the Raw team for um, Survivor Series, but I guess we'll make our, our guesses at the end of the show. Um, the Raw SmackDown I think they purposely did that. Yeah, they did. Um, because. They're waiting for, to see if Roman is <laughs> is, is going to be okay. Uh, yeah. SmackDown takes over Raw. Um, Shane McMahon, who had been shown earlier in the show, uh, returns to the returns to the ring when Kurt is about to announce the team. And these uh, the a, a good part of the SmackDown roster shows up. Uh, I, obviously, Sami Zayn and, Ke- and Kevin Owens did not show up, but we'll get to that in just a second on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. But um, they basically beat up in front. It's like a t- it was like a tier list of, of talent. Where it was like they would beat up the jobbers and the PA guys, then they beat up like the women, then they then like the only two real stars on the show because Miz wasn't involved in this at all, and, and obviously and obviously Braun Strowman wasn't on the show um, on on Monday because of the actions of TLC when he was murdered. Um, but it it was I I'm sorry I I did not like this segment at all. I thought this segment was devoid of any type of logic, and I think this is the main issue with me with Survivor Series right now. And they try and rectify it a little bit on SmackDown, but. There is no heat for this the rivalry. There is no reason for them to dislike each other. There is no reason for them to hate each other. AJ Styles had just teamed up with Rollins and Dean in the first hour. And now he's fighting them. It made no sense. I have I have a theory. Well, I don't I don't have a theory, but I was listening to Shoemaker show earlier this week and they brought up maybe a good point in terms of K Fabe. That maybe AJ Styles with them letting down their guard. Well, that that's what that's what Shane said. That's what Shane says on SmackDown, right. and and I, I guess we we'll, we should just move to SmackDown now. Um, right. But I just want to say about this beatdown, I found it incredibly entertaining. But I I 100 agree it was the void of logic. But still, I don't know. I like I love a good interbrand feud nonetheless, just because we never see them. Well, don't face well, each other. well don't fucking book matches that people don't want to see. Like we don't want to see Miz versus Baron Corbin. True. We don't want to see Alexa I mean, versus just, Natty. They're going champions versus champions. They're trying to make this the All Star Survivor Series, the All Star, which is what I wanted them to do for I don't know how, how long now, and it looks like they're finally doing it. But I guess they're champion priorities. All heel champions. Good job of writing you guys. Like all all of their <laughs> champions are heels. 
Every single champion. Is, I don't give a shit about Survivor Series. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. All of the champions <laughs> are heroes. Kind of a, um, but like, yeah, let's go on to SmackDown. Uh, Smack. I don't know if there's that much to talk about. In SmackDown. SmackDown yet again on on Tuesday was another show that I wasn't a big, uh, I wasn't too hot on. I think so, I, and I think SmackDown's been um, SmackDown has definitely been uh, kind of circling circling the drain for a while, and I'm I, it, yeah. it, a lot of it has to do with what's going on at the top. But um, Shane McMahon basically says that uh, Angle asked, he comes out and dan- you know he says hashtag uh, under siege. That's a new thing. Like I, I guess that's a Survivor that's so, Series. That's such, that sounds so weird. <laughs> yeah. To me. The cha- but it got Just over. Like, the, the people chanted it. The crowd chanted it. Yeah, but like hashtag under siege. Like I, I don't. I mean, I don't want to call people dumb, but like siege is very like you know. Can people spell siege? Like it's 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 not a hard word, but like. Under siege just seems like such a complicated term. Like it's just they couldn't have come up to something like like ready for war. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's too much. But like under siege just sounds so like it sounds like such an old person idea. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it, I feel like it could have been if you're gonna brand it at least make it something cool. Like under siege is it sounds like that's a that's a Steven Seagal like that. that's a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Guys, it was like, yo, it was in the Steven Seagal movie. It's like, it just sounds so battleshipy, Steven Seagal-y. Like, yeah. Nothing of 2017, but you know, whatever. So, uh, he 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 kind of writes off the AJ Styles thing that we just brought up by saying he gladly allowed AJ to to compete and stay an extra night, uh, so that he could, I, I guess, essentially let the SmackDown guys in. I, they, they're they're not really clear on that. But um, Sami Zayn pops out, and how how are you feeling about heel Sami Zayn so far? Um, it's very weird for me to be honest. Um, Same here. I'm not I'm not completely sold on it. He's doing. Don't get me wrong. He's doing great. <laughs> I, I think Sami Zayn's doing great just because he's to me great. Sex. And, and I like, think he's man, doing great. I think he's also doing great because he has something to do. <laughs> man, yeah, right, right, right. That's also true. That's also true because he's had nothing to do for it. He's a great sex. Yeah, the man can act. Yeah, the man can pull out emotion. He knows when to turn it on, turn it off, and at least to the, the sort of nuances of that in terms of just like how much you should. No, He doesn't really oversell. He doesn't really undersell. He's kind of on the mark at yeah. all times. Um, I think with Sami Zayn, though, it's just weird to see him as a bad guy knowing his full potential as a good guy that they kind of just squandered. Yeah. But I believe like we're going to get there, but I feel like this effort you're putting in now, making him a heel, you could have done the same thing as a, a face on the SmackDown. Side. To to your point, so, to your point, the moment when and, and look at what happened with Jericho, and and I and I think this is the same thing is going to happen to Sammy when that turn comes and he and he goes back to good, he'll be there again, and I think they'll they'll yeah. be more willing to push him because Vince always wants to prove that you're a good heel before he makes you that triumphant face. And the same thing happened to Punk. Same thing happened to Daniel Bryan. It happens to everybody. Like you said, I just hope so, man. I, I hope so too. But um, say, I, I, I just like how he's a like he kept his theme music and he's still doing the dance, but it's even worse. Like the dance is like he's obviously trying to piss you off now. Right. It's, it's kind of a it's kind of a dirtbag. I'll be honest. <laughs> like, it's kind of I get it. You know, I'm happy with it because he's kind of a dirtbag. Yeah. I'm you know I'm Sami Zayn fan, but it's a, this is honestly for me this isn't the Sami I want to see. But I mean. This give it a chance. Moving, so. Hey, give it a chance. I'll, I'll give it a chance. Um, so basically, they they set up for later on in the night that uh, Sammy will get his rematch against Randy Orton, who he uh, they they beat them in a tag match last week, I think. And uh, Sammy used a low yeah. blow, and they're 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 trying to get him back for that. So um, I want to go to the weird booking of this show, uh, the the weirdest booking decision, like we did with Raw. That should be like a thing on on our yeah. reviews. We have a weird booking decision of the week. My weird booking decision of the like week. It'll be consistent. <laughs> yeah, my, mine of the week, and this is a, a week of just strange booking, is Gable and Benjamin beating the New Day on TV clean. Uh, I mean, what were the were in a direction uh, with Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin? Were the Ascension sure busy? Like a monthly program. Were the Ascension were the Ascension busy? Like yes. were were the, the hype Obviously bros? They were. And I, oh yeah, they did they have they the did have fashion. Bros. Yeah, like they beat they did beat the hype bros. Fuck. They can't be the Bludgeon yeah. Brothers. I, I feel like the Bludgeon Brothers are going to be the guys that beat the Usos uh, eventually. Actually, no. Put the, put the New Day against the Bludgeon Brothers. But that you know. But the, uh, here's the thing. Like that's probably coming. To be honest with you, that's probably coming. <laughs> I, I just don't get. I, I could get Gable beating maybe Kofi. 
Sure. Or Gable beating Xavier or, or somebody like that. Or, like, beating the team, like, two weeks after they had that Hell in a Cell match, you're really slotting New Day in the mid-card again. Like, you're really saying, okay, we're pushing, we're, we're de-pushing you guys. I see that as taking an opportunity for a team which is not going to lose any steam because New Day is forever evergreen popularity and using their popularity to put somebody else over. Yeah. I don't really see it as a slight to New Day in terms of just like, oh, he's gonna, they're no, just a mid-card team, fall back on the card. Yeah. New Day is important. New Day is going to be important forever. Yeah. At the, for the foreseeable future, at least. I see this as just like, hey, we're, you know, we're putting over, we're, we have this new team here. We need to get them over somehow. New Day is the only other sort of team available right now. I don't know if Fashion Files is like, you really can't use the guys on Fashion Files, which is kind of weird. It's yeah, because like, right, they're in their own world right now. They're in their own world, so I'm just like, oh God, you really can't use like the Ascension or anything? But I guess, I don't know if there's plans. Um, but, you know, I think it's a strong team. They were the Usos you know, last strong opponents, and it kind of makes, you know, them look like a contender. I don't agree with it. I don't I don't agree with it, to be honest. I don't disagree with it. I don't disagree with it. Wow. I say, clean. 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 <laughs> clean. I'm fine with clean. Clean. Wow. All right. I'm fine with clean. We'll have to, agree, to, to disagree on that. I'm not going to I'm not gonna fall down the hill for the new day, because they haven't excited sure. me in a while. But um, we're going to skip ahead. Uh. Fashion Files, I don't really care about Fashion Files. I, I think they stopped being funny a month ago. It's been falling off. It's not, yeah. it's, you know, not falling off, but it's, you know, obviously the attention isn't put into it that it was before, and I feel like it's affecting the show, but I feel like it's got to lead somewhere, you know? Yeah. That's my point. It's leading to like, Bludgeon Brothers. Think, it's, it's leading to Bludgeon Brothers from what they're saying. But, like, like, there's no direct path to there. Yeah. They keep mentioning it, but there's no, like, all right, here's what we're finally doing now. It, like, it needs to go somewhere. It can't just be f- funny for the sake of funny. Well, next week... cool, but... Look, next week for Halloween, we get a Stranger of Things, so we'll see. Um, that's, that's true. One interesting part about the show is that there was actually some tension between Shane and Brian all through the night, um, with Brian obviously being upset that Shane went behind his back and, and put Raw under siege on Monday. Uh, where do you think this is headed? Do you, or do you think this is just something for the month and it'll be forgotten about? I think um, I think it'll come back to bite Shane in the ass. Yeah, um, but you've got to remember Shane's still a face, and the thing is, like, Shane is largely coming off as a heel on Raw, and yeah, he's still a face on SmackDown, and he has to be a face for this Owens program. I think I I can see them sort of transitioning to a heel, but I feel like they could actually do that. But I don't know, Shane as a heel in 2017. I'm not sure how that goes, but. I feel like if SmackDown loses Survivor Series, you kind of have this opportunity to build definitely some real tension in terms of just like I, you kind of have um, Daniel Bryan, former you know longtime wrestler who believes he knows what's good for the roster, yeah, and then you have Shane McMahon, who's this authority type, this sort of like male dominant sort of ego, not like ego but driven, but you know he's an alpha male, yeah, who's like no, but what I say goes, yeah, so it's kind of. You build that sort of tension there, and I don't think you necessarily have to. You eventually turn someone heel, of course, because mm-hmm. you can't like you can't attack Brian. So it's like I don't know what you kind of do it on, but like um, it's a it's weird. It's a weird. It's a it's weird. It's I, weird. But I, I'm hoping it end up bleed somewhere. I just I I eventually think, and I still think that they are eventually going to write off uh, Shane in some capacity and put. Uh, Daniel Bryan again with someone else like a Stephanie or something. I think this Owens program, to me, it's still the best program in the company right now, and I think putting that on hold is awful. I, I and, and I, we'll get to that in, at the end of this of this show. Um, Baron Corbin, I don't care about. Uh, he's a U.S. We'll champion. Have SmackDown pay per view after Survivor Series. Yeah, we got Night of Champions. Um, so we build up somewhere. Baron Baron Corbin is a U.S. title ch- uh, holder who loses to on DQ and count out. Uh, whatever. Um, hot take, hot take. We're gonna get <laughs> hot, hot take. We're gonna get Sin Cara versus The Miz. I'm, I'm like, I'm like seventy percent sure. Oh, Sin Cara's got a shoe. Sin Cara's got a T-shirt. Like, that's more than Baron Corbin has got. <laughs> like, I'm sure. I feel like we're gonna get Cara versus The Miz. Like a strong Sin Cara, <laughs> just versus The Miz. I don't know. This seems very weird. 
Well, I don't, I don't know who on the other brain could face Baron Corbin, but it's it's looking slow for Baron. I feel like I feel like we're due for a title change with Baron Corbin. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know. They just they it's need just, they need the belt to be on somebody. It's just a hunch. Yeah, it's just a hunch. I'm sure they'll take it off Sin Cara almost immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That shit was. Like, uh, I was the, the Baron weird. Corbin pro- project to me is over. My my weird booking of the week. Um, Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler, two out of three falls. Why? Uh, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that at all. Why? Two out of three falls is to me. The way two out of three falls happens in WWE, it makes me definitely never want to see two out of three falls when it happens. Because usually by the time they hit two out of three falls, they've already exhausted all the rematches that I care to see. And it's usually at least two of them. And they're like, well, we're going to, since you beat him once and you beat him twice, we're going to have just three matches in one night. (laughs) Like, I'm just... It's, it's already exhausted the point of two out of three fall. I really don't care to see it. Um, Dolph Ziggler is just... I feel like his heel persona is just as unbearable as his face persona. Yeah. <laughs> um, because he's just... He seems untitled in a way that comes off like dick, dickhead dirt baggage. And it's not like in a heel way where I'm like, oh man, that guy... It's like X-Pac heat. Where it's like, I hate you because you suck. Like, I don't I don't really see it for Dolph Ziggler right now. Like, it makes me kind of want him to go back and turn face. But, it's, but I, I don't even want to see... I don't know. I just don't... I, he could... I'm not wishing the injury or anything. But oh, he, my gosh. He could, he could stand going, being off TV for a couple of months. I'll be honest with you. Right. He could stand being off TV for a couple of months. Um, and Bobby Roode is, you know... Gosh... Lost. I think you want to talk about you want to talk about Finn Balor. You want to talk about Shinsuke Nakamura. You want to talk about Asuka. You want to talk about those guys. Bobby Roode disappeared from TV for three weeks. But well, week. here's what I think about Bobby Roode too. Like here's it's it's the same thing with like the main roster. Like the booking is completely different. I don't know if they see Bobby Roode the same way on NXT that they see him on the main roster. They could see Bobby Roode as a cool mid-card player on the main roster. I never, guy. listen, I never saw him. I never saw him as that. Never. No, I, I 100% agree. I don't think his reign on NXT was, to me, was, you know, that memorable. Um, but I see him, it's like, yo, that guy right there, he's the guy you pointed at. Like, that guy, to me right now, unless he shows something else, or at least, like, has this, like, amazing run of matches or just like a really great high profile program to me i'm looking at that guy i'm like yo that guy is a great four-time u.s champion somewhere <laughs> like down the road like four-time u.s champion maybe in a tag team with somebody and, and i see the title i see the title on on rude in 2018 but i i think that when by the time that happens they made him so unimportant that i, I won't even care when it happens yeah he's, he's a great of, heel he's an awful face he's, he's like, a great heel he's an awful face he's like like an uncle they're trying to get you to like 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 or like a like someone's like your mom's boyfriend who you're trying to who's trying to win you over but really can't like uh, yeah I don't know. yeah um it's, it's just, it's I, not I guess stray thoughts from from smackdown i guess we're not gonna have the gender conversation this week but um no. and i think i've i've talked about this uh you know to you personally but aj styles went against sunil singh beat him in 30 seconds uh Gender actually actually gender cut a promo about Brock Heyman, which that you you mentioned earlier was actually pretty good. I agree it was pretty good. Um AJ will be going against the uh what's who's the other guy? It's Sunil and and uh and Sunil. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even want to mess it up because I don't want that, you know. Well, you can't tell them apart and be racist. I don't know. No, 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 no. I, I don't think that's it. That's not it. I, I forgot I for, I'm sorry for I think it's Sunil. It's a new They have put over their names, to be honest with you. Like, they have. They have but AJ. They're the Singh brothers. No, they're the Singh brothers. Like, the Singh brothers, like, they come out, like, oh, here's the Singh brothers. Like, you don't really. There's not a There's not a name. The other one is named Samir. But. Yeah, um, it's Samir. It's yeah, Samir Sano. It's Samir Sano, yeah. He's yeah go- they haven't put over the names, bro. He's going like, against Samir next week on SmackDown. And um, what I think is going to happen. I know a lot a lot of people. And this is this has nothing to do with the gender argument. I think AJ's getting the belt back. Um, I think AJ's getting the belt back in lieu of him and Nakamura going against each other on going against each right. other at WrestleMania, which I think was a long. It was always a long term plan to have them going against each other. I think that was always the plan. 
because AJ, a match against AJ will heat Nakamura up and make and put him over, I think. And I think that's what they're waiting for. And my thought about this is that WWE clearly knows we want AJ versus Nakamura, and yeah. they're not going to give it to us. And they're going to keep Jinder Mahal as champion because for some reason... Well, here's the like, thing. Oh, you have to keep him champ for... But you have to keep him champ for six more months, Mules. And I... There, there's there's no way you do that on SmackDown because he's beaten everybody. He's beaten everyone twice. He, he at least has I'm to drop it once. He has to stay champion the entire six months. That's what... But I'm, that I'm saying, saying he has to drop it. He has to drop it to someone once. He has to drop it. But I feel like he's going to get it back. I feel like they're very... I feel like... I'm, this is going to be part of the bigger agenda my whole conversation. He's a champion for business. He's not a champion... Because he's good. He's good. He's a champion for business. But here, here's what and I think. But before we get to that, because that actually is a gender conversation, uh, I think AJ, he goes against Samir, Samir next week. I think there's probably going to be a handicap match where he faces both of them the week before sure. Survivor Series. And, he beat, WWE booking. and I think that gender will probably interfere and he'll, they'll beat him, obviously, because handicap matches don't have DQ. Um, and then you'll get you'll get gender versus AJ having some type of issue or, or they'll, you'll get the match probably at, um, not a champions. I think AJ will either win there or I think he will win at Royal Rumble. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Um, that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. There's this weird pay-per-view, not pay-per-view, this weird house show. Also, um, and I think it's, I think it's clash of champions now. Um, hold on. clash of champions is um, November. Uh, night of champions is December. No, they changed it to Clash of Champions. In December? It's no longer Night of Champions. It's not. It's just a name, but it's no longer a Night of Champions. It's called Clash of Champions. Oh, okay. All right. They did it last year. Oh, all right. Yeah, but, yeah. Um. No, it's Starcade in November. I'm I'm tripping. It's Starcade, Starcade in November. Yeah, You're Starcade. right. You're right. So I'm thinking they need a big title switch for Starcade, but I think that might end up just being a women's championship. Yeah, because not it's um, not a more gender at Starcade. That's not happening. Oh really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. All right, never mind. I think it's Nakamura. Uh, I think it's Nakamura, Jinder, and Kevin Owens or something. I think I want to say I, I uh, haven't looked at the card in a minute. How how much do they hate WCW make Starcade a house show? Uh you you pop you, you pop in attendance, and I, and I, we're gonna get to that in NXT in a second too. But you gotta pop in attendance. Sure. You gotta pop in attendance. But um, this is true. In the end, uh, I guess straight thoughts from SmackDown. Uh, Becky Lynch is the team captain for the women's team, which literally every woman on in the roster except uh, except yeah, for Lana is on that team. On the, yeah. So it's like in the champs. So it's like, what is? I mean, there's not really like a. This isn't a very you know. Uh, no heat. I don't know. But whatever. Good. No, good for yeah, Becky. No, this is whatever. It's, good for Becky. This, this reminds me of all the women's matches they used to have before, like the ones that, like, not to say that they don't matter, but like, there's no like blood rivalry. It's just like five chicks teaming up against other five chicks. Sorry to call them chicks, by the way. Women, That's just superstars, women. superstars. Five, five superstars team up against other five superstars, and you're gonna clash. And I don't know. Like, I just don't like it because it's not. I don't feel like these women don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I just feel like they're just wrestling just to wrestle. And plus, and the thing that makes it worse is that these all these women are going to be on a different brand in like six months. And you know what? It's like also like there's like total divas, which like the other like members are on, and where they all like each other. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like I know they don't like they they they're all fine with each other. You yeah. Got Carmella around with the briefcase. Like, I don't know what she's doing with that briefcase. Again, another like, heel. Another fucking heel. I'm like, there's so yeah. many fucking heels on the show. <laughs> I'm like, what are they doing with that That's briefcase? my problem with uh, the gender. That's my problem with the gender thing. I, I keep going back to it. There's, there are so many heels on SmackDown. How in, the, how in the fuck will he carry this Will he carry this belt until April? I just don't see it unless Cena comes back. But well, we're going we're gonna to continue. Um, we yes. get It's going to be Kevin Owens versus Shinsuke Nakamura next week. Uh, and Randy Orton beat Sami Zayn for a spot on the on the SmackDown men's team. I, I'll just go ahead and say it right now. Nakamura is winning the match against Kevin Owens. I think that uh, yeah, I think KO and Sami Zayn are going to interfere in the SmackDown men's match and cost it for them. I'll just say that right um, now. More than likely. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, like I'll say that right now. It, the, the, thing is we, the thing is, I know how they're going to get there. I know how they're going to get there. But I'm. I think the match will still be great. Yeah. If that makes sense. If that makes sense. I, I know how they're gonna get there. The match is gonna be great. But um, don't be surprised if that happens. Uh, SmackDown very average show this week. Let, let's go into some straight NXT thoughts. Um, yeah. Did you watch last night's show? 
I did watch last night's show. A great battle royal. A great battle royal. I'll Shit. give it to the. I'll give it to, to all those. Um, to all the women superstars. Um, that was a great battle royal. <laughs> it's a great battle royal. Be- how about that Bianca Blair or Belair? I'm sorry. How about that Bianca Belair, man? Bianca Belair. Um, I feel like they could go really any way they want with her. Um, she's being she's being portrayed as a face. Deal. Yeah, she's being portrayed yeah. as a face right now. Like a very, but she can do that. I feel like she can. But also, there's a heel part to it too. Yeah, that she could also do as well. So I, I just think she's amazing overall. And, and here, and, um, and um, and of course, the battle royal we're talking about. There was a battle royal to determine the fourth spot in the women's title match. There, with NXT yeah. has still has been without a women's champion for two months now. Um, and they're trying to figure it out right now. The people, or well, currently the, it was Kyrie Sane who won the Mary Young Classic, uh, Peyton Royce, and Ember Moon. Uh, they they put Nikki Cross back into the Battle Royal because she was screwed out of the match uh, two weeks ago, I think, by Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Um, and she ends no, up. No, she was screwed out of. She was no, it was by Tim Ty- Ty- Tyanara. Tyanara Conti. Tyanara, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Black belt. Yeah, and um, um, so Nikki Cross wins this Battle Royal. But here's my thought: If Bianca Belair wins that match, does anyone complain? I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I complain if Bianca Belair wins that battle royal. I don't think I, I complain think be if. A great opportunity. Yeah, I don't. I don't think, but because the thing is, you keep you keep throwing her in with the women that have the that have experience, because she has less than two years experience at this point, I, I believe, and I think you keep throwing her in there, and she gets she ends up being one of your top you know one of your top women in 2018. Yeah, I could I could, I could see that. I feel like they probably thought it was too soon. Yeah, I, I know. I be still. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I I think that I still think Kyrie Sane is going to win it. I I think that my dark horse sure. candidate is Nikki Cross. I think Nikki Cross is oh, I is. Gonna win it. Um, I want pay. I I not Nikki Cross. My dark horse is is Peyton Royce. I think that that title needs a Peyton heel. Peyton Royce would. That title needs Peyton a heel. Royce would do well. Yeah, I think I think she they need that title. So I'm I'm actually probably going to go with Peyton Royce. Yeah, I this match. I think that you you give you have um. You have Kyrie Chase for 2018 and win it in New Orleans. You have three solid chasers who could just chase. Yeah. If Peyton Royce wins it, mm-hmm. so I think it's I think to me just Peyton Royce. I think she deserves it too. I think you know they've been there so uh, long. They've been there so been long. There so long. <laughs> they've, they, the, the only thing that's been keeping them down is like these high profile women or like Oscar. Yeah. Or like these high profile <laughs> women who come in and. Just like oh, they're the attention, but I feel like you know she, they were there also during the initial women's revolution. But they were just like you know they were just they were like jobbers. Being, they were jobbers. Yeah. And now during the Oscar thing, they really came during that five hundred twenty three day reign. They really came into their own as personalities, and I think it, it would do well. It would suit them well to sort of move them forward. Yeah, you could even hint at a little breakup, even if you wanted to, or a little jealousy. You know, amongst the ranks. Yeah. But I think you move forward with, you know, Payne Royce. There hasn't been a good heel champion in a very, very long time on that roster. And shit, in, two, in, two years. in two years. In two years. Yeah, yeah in two years. Um, I I guess skipping around, how do you feel about uh, Alistair Black, Velveteen Dream? I, I really love the visual of Velveteen popping up behind Alistair Black. I like, I like, all right, if you ask me how this match is going to go, I have no idea. Um, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fucking great. I think this match is gonna be fucking great. I think um, Velveteen Dream is still green in the ring. He's been wrestling for like two two years. Yeah, tops. Um, he's he's still not there. Maybe three years. Who knows? But if you have um, Alistair come from behind or come from come from I under, see, but I don't see. Is Alistair the type to carry someone through a good match though? Like he's getting his shit in. Like he's getting his kicks in. He's getting all his shit in. That's what makes. Well, that's how the Kyle, that's how the Kyle O'Reilly match went. It was it was a back and forth, and then the the uh, the Chris Hero match, or the, I'm sorry, Cash's Ono match was was sort of like that too. Like he he's been he's been grounded, but you put the psychological edge there. I and, think it's this match. If if I, I would go with more theatrics than anything for this match, to be honest with you, if he can pull out, if um, Velveteen Dream can pull out some theatrics to get inside his head, but I do like where the feud is going. I like the consistency with this feud, that every week there's some something new. Yeah. I like um, Velveteen Dream's outfits. I think he's great. Just fashion-wise. He's into this. He's into this gimmick. He, you got to be into this into gimmick. gimmick. He needs a little bit more, I'll be honest with you, he needs a little bit more money to pull off a few more like different accessories. Like, he's, he's got some, like, you know, 
Jack's Jack's like you know thing store like the the options he has for his fashion are fully there that I think could be fully realized if he gets to the main roster and makes a little bit more cash to buy a little bit more things. Yeah, you want to know what you want him to wear. You want him to wear assless chaps and shit. That's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that would be yo. I'm not saying that would be great, but I'm saying like yo, that would. All right, that guy. You know. He, he he's fully in you know involved in this character. Sure, sure, sure. Um, the, the 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 crop tops are a nice touch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it's a I think it's a good feud. I think it's probably the to me one of the more interesting things going on in NXT. Yeah. And, uh, NXT has showed that has at least four different storylines going on right now, and they're handling they they're handling all of them perfectly. I must say. Yeah. Um, I agree. going to the the main event, and and I just have to I got to say this for just. MVP of this show, Roderick Strong has been the heart of NXT for about six months now. I think you got to give him, you got to give this to him because this match against uh, Almas, uh, the main event of this week's NXT, damn near got my match of the week. It wasn't as good as the first one, but this match is fucking awesome. I really like that match. Um, I think with Roderick Strong, um, he just needed that opportunity to sh- for people to invest, and once they did, now everyone's on board. So I think he got that opportunity two months, the last two months, last three months, where he was fighting Bobby Roode. You know, he even beat Bobby Roode. Yeah. Um, and where he was in contention for the title with Drew Galloway and just sort of everything like that. Um, sorry, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. <laughs> but it's, I think, you know, you, we're moving forward. I think, I don't know. I think, I don't know. He, he, he's, he's very, very good. I'll give him that. Yeah. He's very, He's, he's super good, and and I also got to give give it up to Almas, who since his turn uh, earlier this year is finally starting to look like the guy that I know him. I know him as this is La Sombra. Like he is killing it right now. He's not talking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 100% he, he's not talking. he ditched the stupid he's... hat. He he's completely like, and, and and I think a lot of that is is because of Zelina Vega, who I also think 100%. is one hundred percent. She's That's great. Like a heater. That's a heater that's like heat. That yeah. works. Yes. Like she gets on everyone's nerves. Now you add the physical aspect to it that she's getting in there and doing her karatas. Yeah. Crazy. Awesome. She's um, an awesome manager here. Um, Great match. It went about nine minutes and almost won after, uh, ironically, like you just said, uh, Zelina Vega gave Roderick Strong a Hurricane Rana into the steps. Uh, almost put him back in the ring, gave him the hammer like DDT, and Almas is looking like the next challenger for Drew McIntyre's NXT Championship at NXT Takeover. I'm not going to say the name because they're going to reveal it next week. Um, no, yeah. they, they announced it on YouTube. Oh yeah, NXT. they they did, they did. So I can say that, that it's in because the TV and the right. tapings like it's NXT War Games. Yeah. They're going to announce it. They're going to announce I'm it. On, I'm on their YouTube channel. That's only how I know. That's yeah. Like, I, I I'm very I'm I'm very you know you know me I'm very adamant about NXT spoilers I'll watch the spoilers and I'll still I'll still watch the show um because they kind of balance how what I what I think is gonna happen and and of course they add video things into the show um during the tapings that you don't see when you're at the, ta- the, the at the right. tapings but um I was kind of concerned to spoil the war games thing but they they spoil it themselves obviously but um it's it's NXT TakeOver War Games, that looks like it's going to be your title match. I don't think it's going to be the main event, though, because I think the War Games match will no. be. Um, but it's probably it's going to be Drew McIntyre and Andrade Cien Almas, which I think is going to blow the roof off. I don't know if it's going to blow the roof off. I think honest. it will. I, I think Drew McIntyre... I think it'll be good. He needs that one match. Drew McIntyre doesn't blow the roof off in any building. That match against not, Roderick Strong? Not, that match against Roderick Strong? Not, he blew off full sail. <laughs> oh like my full god! Sale is a, full sale is a different crowd. Plus, that was that first like taping of that. So of course they're like anti for wrestling. I, I think I think but Almas will Drew give. McIntyre, go ahead. I'll say this: when we got to Brooklyn, and I don't maybe it's the thing for Bobby Roode herself um, and and Drew McIntyre. When we got there, the crowd was completely like we were out of it by the time the Drew McIntyre match came because I think we were just waiting for the end. Yeah. Um, where, well, luckily, okay, he won't be there at the end now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, yeah, he might, it low-key might be the cool-down match. <laughs> it low-key might be a cool-down match. You gotta end, you gotta end with the war games. It's got a cage and two rings, bro. Like, you, you're two not, rings. yeah, you're not stopping that and then going into a, a, a milk toast one-on-one no. match. That's Even not... Two rings, I don't, war games, war games is cool, but then you have, like, the other ring 
um, that's just sitting there. Yeah. For the and now you just have two rings. It's, I don't know. It's gonna be just, weird. I'm it's interested in how it looks. I'm I I, in how it looks. I would ex- I would expect that by next week's NXT, uh, I will watch it. I will watch next week. I'll I'll say that much because you'll get a you'll get a. a you get an idea of where the booking is going for this show, but so far, I, I like this week's edition of NXT. I have liked NXT for the last month. I think it is a very good show. I think it's currently one of the best wrestling shows on TV right now. Go out of your way to watch it. Um, yeah. Really like this episode. Um, oh, but oh, I forgot the, the last part of the show. Um, Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era come out to try and recruit Roger Strong, which I think is a really good, really good twist on the storyline and adds great another storyline to the show. Yeah, it's a great angle. They they great hand them. They handled him the Nexus-like uh, armband. I know I'm not the only one who thought that when they handed him the, the armband. Yeah. But um, every 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 faction will get an armband. Ho- hopefully, it doesn't end like Nexus. But um, I I what do you feel about Cole and the gang since they've debuted? Um, I know a lot of people are very excited. It's a, it's a lot of people are actually more wait and see with them than they are with a lot of prospects on NXT. And I think that's just the nature of how the tapings go. But I I have no problem with them being the you know the invasion uh, stable. For the show right now, I think as much as they're used, and I think they still need to do something more. I think they mm-hmm. need to assert a little bit more dominance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're good. It's, it's obvious that we're building towards that. Yeah, but I think they need to assert a little bit more dominance in terms of just like the dominant stable. Dominant they need stable. another. I think they need another member. I think that's the problem. I think it's really uneven at three. Obviously uneven, uneven yeah. at three, but you add one more. It's kind of even for NXT standards. It's you, like you got one championship, you got a tag team championship. But you like gotta that. add, um, you gotta add that one more guy that's gonna be getting beat up, or the guy that's gonna be doing a lot of the stuff that Kyle O'Reilly and and Fish do, so that Adam Cole isn't a part of all of the beatdowns. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to keep him protected. Here's a, here's a here's a nice little twist that should happen. What if? All right, I'm booking way out of my league right here. What if? Killian Dane jumps to that group. Incredible. I'd love it. Well, if he jumps to that group, he's just like, I'm turning on sanity. I'm now shaving my chest and wearing a giant X, triple X t shirt. Like, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But, you know. More than that, I, I think. Crazy booking of the week. I think a good. I, and, and actually, NXT didn't have any crazy booking this week. They had no. I had no problems with NXT. No, they booking rarely week. do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're booked pretty solid. Um, I. What about. Um, what about my man who just debuted, um, Leo Rush? How about him? Leo Rush. Leo Rush is cool. I'm glad they put him on NXT. I'm, I'm saying he could be part of the he could be part of the undisputed era. He's an ROH guy. Um, I think he's. I'm gonna sound like a Vince guy. He's kind of too small to be. Adam part of Cole the is era. Fi- Adam Cole is five eight. Don't even. <laughs> he's kind of too small. He's shorter than Adam Cole. I know he is. I don't care what build height they gave him. <laughs> um, he's kind of he's. I think he'd be better at the plucky underdog who has to go against them. Right. I think that's his stick. I don't know. You kind of um. You lose a lot of his offense by turning him heel. And Maybe. His kind of what makes him. Make him a cocky think, motherfucker. Make him a cocky motherfucker. Like put him, him against Velveteen Dream. I think he has a score to settle. They ironically used to be on a tag, tag team. team yeah, he brought it up on Before. Twitter. He brought it up on Twitter, but they didn't bring it up on NXT that they're that they're actually friends. Yeah. So we'll Good see. For him going into business for himself, like, like he's been <laughs> known to do. But um, that 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 was the week in wrestling so far. I, I guess the last thing we, we do have to speak about is Survivor Series so far. What do you feel about the card? Um, and right now, not everything is announced. Um, this, the men's match isn't announced. The women's match isn't. The the all the participants on the Raw side are not announced yet. Other than Miz, Baron Corbin, you've got um, Alexa versus uh, Natty for the for the champion versus champion angle, and you've got gender, yeah. you've got gender versus you got gender versus Brock, which to me is a um, it's a match that I don't think is going on last, which is going to be funny because I think the men's match is going to go on last because that's going to be like a forty minute match, and yeah. I think here's what I think I think if Brock doesn't go on last, that uh, that Brock's winning, that Brock's winning. But I think I'm if it, one hundred percent Brock's winning. <laughs> but I, I, you never know. You never know. But like this is true. You, you know, never know. You de- you interference collapse. You could have you know. told like bef- but like may- up to maybe like two weeks before the the, ma- the second match happened. I thought Nakamura was gonna win. Then the two weeks before, I was like, Nah, they're not booking Nakamura to be powerful enough to be winning anything. So I and I and I said that he was gonna lose, and a lot of people were getting upset. And I was like, No, like Nakamura is gonna lose this match. Like 
they don't want him to have the belt going into the winter because he has he really doesn't have anyone to feud with anyway. But um, it's true. um, I think, um, I think if if it goes on last, gender's winning. I think in terms of Survivor Series, I think that tag team match should be phenomenal between the Shield and the Usos. Oh yeah, that, I forgot that that's that got announced too. Um, Alexa Bliss versus Natalia, I am not looking forward to. No, as two heels, I think if Natalia becomes a face, maybe replace the face in this, but really no. They're not going to. Um, yeah, I'm not a, actually. I think. We're gonna shit no that fucking Starcade is after Survivor Series. Yep. Whatever. It's a week after. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not I'm not interested in this match. Um I think the men's five on five and the women's five on five. This is a four hour show, by I the hope, way. Remember, it's a four hour show. They're good. Yeah. Because <clears throat> they're really the basis of the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um Survivor Series has got canned so much because the one match that's supposed to be good is usually never that great. Yeah. Um, except for, say, for a few years or so. Right. But um, usually Survivor Series is kind of, it's really the, the lowest on the totem pole of any of the four shows. It's a watch. They don't really, yeah, it's really. And this year's, this, get, this year's four yeah. hours. This year's four hours. It's a four-hour show this year. It's kind of bad, yeah. Yeah, like. Sure we're gonna, and then if, um, if Roman Reigns doesn't, Return. I'm sure we're getting. Uh, I'm sure we're getting Kurt Angle in that match. A hundred percent, my brother. Like, but here's my thing. Kurt and Shane. This is looking like. Here's my problem with the match too. Like Kurt and Shane, yeah, it's gonna right? look like Kurt and Shane. Yeah, that's what. The, that's my problem with this match is that it's Kurt and Shane. These other guys in the match have no reason to get between their quarrel. Why not just make a match between those two guys? And then I, great, I wanted right? it. Yes, yeah, I think it would be. But um, and then and then you. You're not you're mortgaging away AJ versus Finn. I think I think with a match that good, you just go you go right back to it. There's nothing that they're doing. They're not doing anything. Vince hates faces versus faces. Oh it's my god! But loves heels time. versus heels, huh? Loves. I mean, <laughs> heels versus probably. I don't know. We, we're probably gonna get title switches, or else there's gonna be a lot of. Mis- but but to who? Because the thing is, the only person that could take the title from Natty right now is Carmella, and that's another heel. Um, and then the only person that's, that could realistically take the title from Alexa is no one that's in that women's match. It'd probably be Asuka. And, and if my problem is this. If you put Asuka in that women's match, you have to really book her good. And she could not be pinned. And, and I think I proposed this to you as well. Have Asuka be the sole survivor and go one-on-three against them and then, and then win. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah, I the think... SmackDown, SmackDown roster doesn't have anyone really to shake at. They've kind of, like cooled off a lot on Charlotte. Yeah. Which is a terrible idea in my opinion. Charlotte should be Charlotte should be the champion right now. I, I agree. Charlotte should be champion <clears throat> for a, a long ass time. I think the Char- a Charlotte Naomi feud would have worked. Charlotte Becky, so, fuck that. Charlotte Becky. I think Charlotte Naomi just the I think the characters, the undertones, everything moving forward, I think Charlotte and Naomi would have worked if they if they stood that course. Right. And Charlotte as a heel and Naomi as a face. But they didn't. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's whatever. So, um, so realistically, is, yeah, for the men, realistically for the men on SmackDown, you've got, you're probably, you're going to get Orton, Nakamura, um, Shane, uh, I guess AJ, and, um, oh yeah, uh, Bobby Roode. That would be five. Uh, for Rusev action in there. I need Rusev. In my I don't life. think. I don't think they're they're Meltzer saying he's in a tag team with fucking Aiden English. So I don't think that's happening. What? Yeah. Rusev is amazing. Yeah. Oh, God. Um. I think Raw is gonna shake out with um with Kurt, Finn. Oh, Raw is Finn, looking shaky. Finn Balor. <laughs> um. I'm, I mean, you took you took Seth and Dean away. Um. You got you got took Kurt. Seth and Dean away. Kurt Finn. Um. Roman. Braun. You hope Roman's back. Bron, I hope Roman. Roman's back. Would you put Bron? Um, I, I, but, but see, my, my thing, Bron has no reason to be in that match. <laughs> like, nah, he has no reason. It looks like it's going to be Bron versus Kane, bro. Yeah, like, right. They, especially when you rematch that four hours to me, I'm like, oh, Jason, Jason Jordan? Bron, Jason Jordan and Matt Hardy? I, like, uh, that's just awful Jason to me. Jason Jordan. <laughs> Shit. It, it really falls down a steep slope once you get right. When you, when you get past you know, Finn. Yeah, like, I, yeah. Bray might not be ready. Like, I'm saying, like, you're mortgaging a lot of these guys in this in this, in this this program who then have to go back on their show and act like uh, either faces or heels. Hey, you haven't seen um, good old 
Joey Samoe in a very long time. Oh, I mean, he's ready. He's ready to go from what I hear. So we let's, might. Let's get him ready to go. Yeah. He... It's Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe on the same team. Yeah. Who doesn't want to see that? That, that might be tight. Like Finn Balor on the same team. That might be tight. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess we'll, we'll see as it shakes out. And we'll, of course, we'll be here every week to tell you about the, uh, the happenings on the shows. Um, I guess the last segment we have is match of the week where me and sure. Niels will pick out our favorite match of this week. We had a pay-per-view this week, so it might actually make it easier. But, I mean, I think to me a shoe-in for match of the week is uh, AJ Styles versus Finn Balor from Sunday's TLC pay-per-view. Uh, I give a runner-up to Roger Strong versus Cian Almas, but I think AJ and Finn was a, for a match that got thrown together in a day and uh, actually a very l- low-impact one. I, like, I know they could do better than this. Like, I, I gave it maybe like four and a half, yeah. but I know they could, do, they could do way better than this. And that's the thing that's, that scares me and excites me about it is that I know these two guys can really blow the house off, and they did on Sunday. I'm going to give my match of the week to that women's battle royal on NXT because that was really, really good. I'm a, I'm a fan of a good battle royal. Um, I like how... Because oh, the women's battle royal, the battle royal at NXT has always been kind of how the division kind of shifts. Yeah. Like, I've seen them do it before. Where With Oscar. It, it yeah. was that battle... It was that battle royal where Tyler Breeze and Sami Zayn were eliminated at the same time. Yeah. That really started moving forward that. It was that battle royal with the women where they introduced Asuka. And shout out to Ben Coyle, who will never let us forget Eva Marie eliminating Asuka. Yeah. And no one talked about it ever. Um, it's not a pinfall it submission. Kind of, it's not a pinfall submission. Yeah, that's, that's true. But it was still pretty funny. Like, yeah. It's a, she, she got rid of her. So shout out to Ben. Um, and what I think know we set up the, the next group of women's division moving forward here mm-hmm. you even had the little aftermath with everyone coming in and um you know staring each, staring other, each down other down yeah so, that was tight I, I'll, I'll give it to that I'll yeah to that. i'm not mad at that I, i'm pretty sure some weeks i'll be arguing with you but i'm not mad at that i think nxt is a i just want to give i just want to give people an alternative yeah, so <laughs> just to be I, I think I that uh, an we're gonna agree some weeks, some guys. We'll agree. Some yeah, days we'll agree. we're gonna agree sometimes. I, but I, again, like yeah. I said, NXT is a brisk watch for me. It's my favorite show to watch. I think actually, kind of um, coming up there and, and and moving up in the ranks, two hundred five live is actually surprisingly easy to watch now with ends up. I've, I've watched the challenge. So. Yeah, I, 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 I know this sounds crazy. I enjoy I enjoy the Rich Swan Cedric Alexander team. I think Enzo having his not having a voice and using all the other heels on the division to do his promo for him is great. He is really giving these guys a time to shine and a chance to show their personality, and that's what we've wanted for a year. I I think two hundred five live. There's definitely life, signs of life there, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, One more match. I want people to think at, and it hasn't come from this week. I don't know. This is the random like, yo, you should watch this. Yeah. Um, Survivor Series match from last year. Everyone's talking I about that. It. Yeah. I watched that a couple days ago. Very good match. Who won that he match? Hit all the points. SmackDown. SmackDown won uh, that match. Randy, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt were the final survivors, the sole survivors. Yeah, and that was when he was doing the he was doing the uh, he was doing the the, yep. uh, the Wyatt great family. Great storytelling. Mm-hmm. Great spots. Went mm-hmm. an hour long. Plenty of AJ Styles. Um, Roman Reigns killing Shane McMahon and himself. <laughs> um, there was a there was a there was a stray shield spot. For some reason, even though Dean is on the other brand, yeah, and you had good fire from Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, it was just an overall good match. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a survivor series. Was it match better than party. the one that Dolph Ziggler won the year before that? No, because that one had like everything intertwined to it. That one had the the bigger story of just like, hey, we, this is like we have to beat the we have, yeah, we have to beat we the we have to beat them. We have to beat the um like the the authority that was the that was the authority like to keep their jobs or some shit, right? right? Another underrated one. I'm sorry if I'm going off. No, you're good. Another underrated one. 2003 Survivor Series match. Team Bischoff versus Team Stone Cold. The final... It it made me... I don't... I won't say it don't made me a believer in Shawn Michaels again. Shawn (laughs) Michaels killed that. Like, Shawn Michaels as a sole survivor... Quite possibly the best soul survivor there's ever. Not as a soul survivor. And it's funny. It, won, like, it's funny you bring that up because Dolph completely stole that whole. And I remember that match. And, I, and I, I remember saying Dolph stole that every single spot from that match. Every single like hope spot he stole that from from that match. And and I mean not saying it's a bad thing, but I mean Dolph's whole career is Shawn Michaels anyway. 
But I I, right. I love that match for that reason. Like even though Randy Orton won, Shawn Michaels, that's an example of making someone look strong. Yeah, Batista showed up, yeah. ruined the match. Oh my god, it was. I read a. I was into a podcast um, where they're pretty much. It kind of ruined it for me. The one with Dolph Ziggler winning. Yeah. Because they kind of just said like, "Hey, you know, like Roman Reigns was supposed to be in that. It <laughs> <laughs> was supposed to be in the position that Ziggler was in, and if Roman Reigns was still, you know, able to work, he probably would have. What? I was like, damn, that's kind of. Was that the hernia year? Was that wasn't the hernia year? I, it was. It was one. I think it was the hernia year. He came back the following. He came back at TLC chair stairs, Claire's. <laughs> like he came back at that one. I know that, so it must have been that one. Yeah, but, I think yeah. it was. I think that might have been know. a hernia. That oh, uh, was it? I don't know. It's, it's he gets. He always gets injured around this time of the year. Has anyone ever noticed yeah. that? Like he always gets injured this time of year. But this is um, true. that was the first episode of the A Show. Uh, we went long. Bro. It's the first show. We're 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 working it. We're working show. out all the all the kinks. We're gonna we're gonna have a we're obviously gonna have guests on the show um from all over right. the the wrestle the the wrestle rap sphere. We're gonna have people asking for their opinions. If you have any questions for us, you can hit us up on Twitter. I am of course at OG Johnny Five and Meals is at Meals TV M E E L Z TV. Meals, do you have anything yes. you want to push? Um, Two Belts Podcast. It's another podcast I do during the week. I can't believe I'm doing two podcasts now. Um, it's lit. We're back. We're officially back. So please subscribe. Two belts on iTunes and it's two belts um, on SoundCloud. Two belts podcast on SoundCloud. You can also follow the two belts Twitter at two belts podcast. So it's another thing that I'm doing. It's really really great. I really love doing this as well. So it's kind of nice. It's, it's, it's very very nice. It's very nice. Anything you're pushing, my friend? What are you pushing? Uh, no. I, obviously, you can follow me on Twitter for my random musings. Um, I'm currently watching a whole bunch of horror movies, so if you need any recommendations, I got you on that. Um, you are? Yes. And um, next week, we will be reviewing the Halloween edition of SmackDown and also telling you guys what went on with uh, Raw and what, what else happens in the news. Damn, that's about to be really corny. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. Um, but yeah, we're we're moving into November. We're moving into uh, Mania season. I'm very excited, uh, and and I think Mills can, you know, ref, you know, he's pretty excited as well. But um, I'm really glad to be doing the show with you, buddy. Thanks for doing it, and thank you guys for listening. Peace out. All right, guys. <laughs>